Hello guys, welcome to the Python tutorial session. So for this session, I'm going to talk about data types because it's a very important aspect that you have to know before we delve deeper into the programming. So whenever you enter your Python code, be aware that it's data that you are entering. Okay. And so in this data you are entering has some unique properties okay and this properties is what is used to categorize them into data types okay so in this category or this unique properties also determine what kind of operations you can perform on that particular data okay now there are a, a number of data types in python but we are going to look at just a few of them because those few are what you will be using a lot in this particular programming tutorials and so the first one is integer okay so integer the name is int and integers are numbers without a decimal place okay they are whole numbers without decimal place so these are some examples floats are numbers with decimal places with decimal figures such as this one here okay so 0 0.5 1.2 8.0 they are all floating point numbers there's also the boolean values which are true and then false so in terms of examples for boolean the value can either be true or false we also have strings and examples are this and this so string values you will see them being enclosed in what double quotes here and then here okay beginning and end are double quotes or it could also be single quotes that's a string we also have lists lists are enclosed in square brackets as we have here okay so, and each of the values or each of the uh, members in that particular list objects is separated by a comma that tells you this a, 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 a member, this another member, this another member. We also have dictionary. So dictionary contains what you call the key value pair. Okay. So for dictionary objects, you have the key, and there's the value, and then you have you find a colon separating the two. So there's a key value pair, and each key value pair is separated from the other by the comma here that's for and the common data types that we are going to use if there's an extra data type that i'll have to introduce i'll do that when it's necessary so let's move on so we'll first start with integers good so it's in python it is pretty straightforward to just assign a value okay to a variable and so let's say you want to create an integer okay there's an integer three okay if you want to know what type of data type what data type a, a value is you use the word type okay so if you have this number which we know is integer but you want to confirm you use type and then python will give you its data type here Okay, so this is an int. Now, talking of integers, you can assign an integer value to a variable. So let's just say we have a variable called my number. Okay, we can assign, let's say, 5 to it. That's an integer. Okay. And then if you want to display it, we use the print statement here. So we can just say, and then we enter it. Now, because I'm using the Jupyter Notebook, it allows me to enter several codes in a single cell and run them at once. So, that's what I'll be doing. Now, we can perform mathematical operations on integers. Okay, so let's create two new integers and then perform some operations on them. Let's say number one is equal to 10. And then number two is equals to 45 
Now we'll perform four operations here. So the first will be addition. So let's just say number one plus number two. Okay, so oh, just an error. Okay, it's because of this particular one. Let me correct it here. Wait. Now, if you also know that it was case sensitive, so whatever value you create, you make sure you refer to that same sequence. So this a mathematical operation you have performed. If you want to perform a multiplication, then you use star. So let's just say number one multiplied by number two. Okay. So we use star. Sorry, the asterisk symbol to represent multiplication operation. So let's say number two. Okay. So that will also give us. If you are dealing with division, okay, then the division is a slash symbol. So let's just say number two divided by number one. This slash is what we use. And that also give us an answer. Okay, so this is how we perform and if it's multiple if it's subtraction, then this is number two minus number one. That will also give us an answer. Now we can also assign a result of an equation to another variable. Okay, so let's try that one before we move on to the next session. So let's just say we have My number one is equals to hundred. Let me just make it straight away. So let's just say total. Okay, we are performing two operations. Let's say six plus five. Okay, so this result will be assigned to this variable. Okay, so that when we come and then we want to refer or we want to print it, it will now give us the answer which is 11. Okay, so this is how um, we deal with integers. Of course, there are several operations we can perform, but we will do those ones as we go deeper. So this is just to give you um, an idea or a, br a brush through integers. Now let's deal with floats. So floats have this small places. So let's just say my float 1 is equals to what? 0 0.9. Okay, that's my float 1. Okay. Now if I want to know the data type, I can issue type and it will Python will tell me it's floats. Okay. So this is for floating uh, point numbers. We can also perform mathematical operations on floating point numbers. Okay, so you can just say 9.1 plus 2.8, and then that will give us the answer here. Okay, so this is for floats. We can perform operations on floats and integers. So let's just do a multiplication. Let's say 2 multiply by 2.5 that will give us an answer but notice that even though this was integer okay it, it's converted them to floats so if you multiply or add once you have an operation between a float and then an integer most of the time the return result to be in a float um, data type. So if you don't want it to be in a uh, float data type, you can issue an int. Okay. So if you issue an int to the results, then it will give you in the integer format. You can also switch between floats and then integers. So let's just say we have my integer 
which is 10 and let's just say my float which is 2.87 and if I want to convert an integer to a float what I will do is to what issue the float and then I give the integer which I want to convert to floats and then it will do it for me likewise if you have a float number you want to convert to integer you use the int and then you enter the float number and then it gives you the answer okay so that's for the conversions now you should also take note that there's a difference between this and then this okay take note that this one is in double quotes so that makes this a string and that also makes this this makes integer okay so if you have this you made the type to give you string and this will give you int Okay, so you should take note of that as well. Now, if you had some numbers which are in quotes, you could convert them to integer or floats as well. So, if let's say you had this, which you know uh, you want to use in the mathematical equations, you can convert it to integer by issuing your int. And it will do it for you okay the same way if you had some flutes which were in quotes which was a strange you could convert it to flutes by that command okay so this is useful for um, converting between some data types so very important okay the next one is boolean values okay boolean values true or false normally we will combine the boolean values in logical operators okay but let's try this okay so boolean values can be true or false so true is a boolean so if you just say type true that bool okay type false that was a bool okay so those are boolean values now in python zero has a boolean value of false and all other values of boolean value true so you should take note of that so these are things that as you practice you get to know so it's important that you get to know them here now boolean values they are very handy especially when you're dealing with logical operations where you want to ask if a certain statement or a certain condition is true or false okay so we will quickly do some logical operations now but before we do the logical operations let's quickly um, recap the mathematical operations here so addition subtraction multiplication and then division okay and then division that's for uh, the basic mathematical operations right so now let's look at the logical operations we will quickly do here so for logical operations if you have this symbol here then that means we are querying if a value is less than another value if it's this then that means greater than and we also have less than or equal to we also have greater than or equal to we also have equal to and then not equal to okay so 
we will wrap up by performing these logical operations to combine the integer floating point numbers as well as the boolean numbers okay so the first thing we are going to do okay so now let's look at this scenario we have apples equals 10 oranges equals 5 grapes equals 5 so let's use the logical operators to answer the questions so at the number of apples greater than 5 so how can we ask this question in Python and get the boolean value which is true or false so the number of apples greater than 5 so that means apples greater than 5 so is it true yes it's true because apples has a value of 10 okay the number of grapes equals the number of oranges you know for equal sign if it's equal we use the double equal sign so that means grapes is equals to what oranges okay okay here here i use capital so i'll use capital here as well because python is case sensitive that's also true okay let's say is the product of two answers greater or equals to nine yes let's see so the product of two and six will be what two multiply by six is this greater or equals to nine is it true it's true so let's try the last question This is the number of apples equals to equal to number of grapes. So that would be what apples equals to grapes. Is it true? It's false because apples is ten and grapes is what five. Okay so this will be all for this session so we've covered what integers floats boolean values and we also perform some mathematical operations as well as logical operations this is important because we are going to apply these steps in subsequent work the next session i'm going to talk about strings and that will also be an exciting tutorial where we will now use the biological data types such as DNA and RNA sequences. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.